Hey, it's Mason from MH Wedding Films and today I'm going to show you how I export my short videos for YouTube from Premiere Pro. YouTube Shorts are still relatively new, but they are a game changer when it comes to engagement and interacting with your audience. I've seen a huge growth in my YouTube channel from these and hopefully you will as well. So with that being said, let's jump into Premiere Pro and I'll show you my export settings for YouTube Shorts. <laughs> Once you are into your main screen, you basically want to come down to this bottom, oops, you basically want to come down to this bottom page here and you can just click it and then click sequence and we will make our own sequence. So we're just going to click settings. I'm just going to show you exactly how I set up my sequence for uh, YouTube shorts and then you can just follow along and kind of see what I'm doing and I'll explain it as I go. So the first thing you want to make sure is that your editing mode is in DSLR. You want to make sure that your time base is 23.976. You want to make sure that your frame size is 1080 by 1920. Now 1080 by 1920 is going to give you the 9 to 16 ratio. We talked about this in the Reels video that I did for Premiere Pro. This is basically vertical video. That's what YouTube Reels are as well. So you want to just make sure that you have vertical video for that. Uh, square pixels for your aspect ratio. Your field should be no fields, progressive scan. Display format 23.976. I think basically your fields, display format, uh, color space are, are all default. So just leave them at that. Make sure your sample rate is 4,800. Make sure your sample rate is 48,000. And that's pretty much it. So we can go now and save this. So click save and make it YouTube shorts and you would hit okay. I already have one saved. So I'm just gonna go and open up the save one. All right, so now I have my sequence made. I'm ready to start editing. So I'll just grab some video in here and throw it in. I'm going to keep my existing settings. So now that your footage is in your sequence, you want to just make sure that you have the proper scale. So this one was already vertical, but yours may not be. So just come over to your effects control panel and the video area here. You can just adjust your scale to make it fit. Mine already matches, so I'm all good to go. Once you have that and your edits are all done, just make your ins and outs. Go render it all. Boom. Done. All good to go. And then you would just come and press control M or Apple M on your keyboard. If that doesn't work, you can always come over to file and just go export media. Okay, so now that we have everything here and we're in the export screen, I'm just gonna go through and tell you exactly what I set up so that you can just set yours up like that for YouTube. This just worked for me. I've done a couple tr trials and tests on this and this works the best for me. Okay, so first things format, you wanna make sure that that is in H.264. Your preset, don't worry about that. Just leave it because we're making ours right now. Click uh, output name and make it whatever you want. Make sure that you have export video and export audio selected. Okay, so now we are going down to the video section. Okay, so first things first, you wanna make sure that you have 1080 by 1920 uh, selected. So 1080 by 1920, mine's already like that, but if you need to click it, you can just unclick this box and select a 1080 by 1920. Next thing you wanna come down is make sure that your frame rate matches what your sequence was. So ours was 23.976. Uh, I would just leave fuel order as progressive, aspect as square pixels 1.0. Make sure that render at max depth. Make sure, make sure that render at max depth is selected. Uh, leave TV standard. Okay, and in coding settings, so you're going to want to either select software or hardware, whatever is available. You want to make sure that the profile is in high. Level is 5.2. I would just leave HDR graphics where they are. So next thing is bitrate. This is what I have kind of messed around with and what I find works the best is VBR2 pass, the minimum bitrate to be 15 and the maximum bitrate to be 20. This works for me. I've found that it is good for keeping really, really high quality in your videos while still uploading. It's a very similar setup to the Instagram Reels video I did. It's almost exactly the same. Uh, so yeah, like it, it's, it's a similar kind of format and similar way of setting it up too. And besides that, just make sure that your audio is set to AAC 48,000 Hertz and make sure that you have maximum render quality set and you are good to hit export. 
Of course, once you have it exported, you're going to want to make sure that you get it onto YouTube in a certain way. So if you want to add music to it or kind of do some editing from your phone, what I would suggest is if you are on a PC, just Dropbox it to yourself. Or if you are on an iPhone and Mac computer, you can just airdrop it to yourself. That's going to allow you to actually add music to your short if you want to add something on top of whatever you've already created. What I actually do is I don't add any music to my videos when I make them. I just go into YouTube and I just select a song that's either trending or popular that goes well with my video. I try to edit with the music before and yeah, it's definitely nice to edit to music, but I just found with so much music coming out, trends changing and stuff like that, it's way faster to just get footage in a way that looks good and then adding the music after. If you're gonna upload it directly on your desktop to YouTube, there is limits. You can't select music yet. They haven't made that feature. I'm hoping that they make it soon because having to go to your iPhone to add music is really annoying. I'm hoping as this progresses, the desktop version will become more powerful so we don't have to go to our iPhone each time. Um, that's one thing I really don't like about these social platforms is that you can't do everything from your desktop make life a lot easier and then just one thing to keep in mind too when you are doing this on the youtube shorts there's going to be like the like button the dislike button comment share and whatever you write as your uh, description you just want to make sure that that's not covering anything important so keep that in mind when you are making and editing these videos so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did smash that like button hit subscribe and i hope that this helps you with your youtube game and increases your engagement i think it's interesting to see the change in content now it used to be long form and now short form is just blowing up this helped you and subscribe if you want to follow along for more tips and tutorials thank you mm.